According to the American Diabetes Association, or ADA, in 2010, about 73,000 non-traumatic lower limb amputations were performed in adults aged 20 years or older with diagnosed diabetes. About 60% of non-traumatic lower limb amputations among people aged 20 years or older occur in people with diabetes. The 1993 landmark study, the Diabetes Control and Complications Trial, which was funded by the National Institutes of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, conclusively showed that keeping blood glucose as close to normal as possible significantly slows the onset and progression of diabetic nerve and vascular complications, which can lead to amputation. As you know, people who have diabetes are at much higher risk for developing neuropathies which can lead to vascular damage. Early identification and early intervention is the key to prevent problems from occurring or worsening. The National Diabetes Education Program has developed the Feet Can Last a Lifetime Guide which provides suggestions and examples for caring for diabetic feet. They have come up with four basic steps for preventative foot care. Early identification of the high-risk diabetic foot, early diagnosis of foot problems, early intervention to prevent deterioration that may lead to amputation, and lastly, patient education for the proper care of feet and footwear. There are many tools available to help you and your staff incorporate diabetes foot exams into clinical practice. Current 2016 ADA guidelines recommend that a foot exam is done and documented at least yearly, but if there are problems, they should occur at every visit. The 2016 recommendations include perform a comprehensive foot evaluation each year to identify risk factors for ulcers and amputations, obtain a prior history of ulceration, amputation, charcoal foot, angioplasty, or vascular surgery, cigarette smoking, retinopathy, and renal disease, and assess current symptoms of neuropathy, such as pain, burning, numbness, and vascular disease, such as leg fatigue or claudication. The examination should include inspection of the skin, assessment of foot deformities, Neurological assessment, including a 10-gram monofilament testing and pinprick or vibration testing, or assessment of ankle reflexes, and vascular assessment, including pulses in the legs and feet. Patients with a history of ulcers or amputations, foot deformity, insensate feet, and peripheral arterial disease are at substantially increased risk for ulcers and amputations and should have their feet examined at every visit. Patients with symptoms of claudication or decreased or absent pedal pulses should be referred for ankle brachial index and for further vascular assessment. A multidisciplinary approach is recommended for individuals with foot ulcers and high-risk feet for example, dialysis patients and those with Charcot foot, prior ulcers, or amputation. Refer patients who smoke or who have histories of prior lower extremity complications, loss of protective sensation, structural abnormalities, or peripheral artery disease to foot care specialists for ongoing preventative care and lifelong surveillance. Provide general foot self-care education to all patients with diabetes. The risk of ulcers and amputations are increased in diabetic patients who have the following risk factors. A history of a foot ulcer, history of previous amputation, a foot deformity, peripheral neuropathy, PAD, poorly controlled diabetes, visual impairment, neuropathy, and lastly, cigarette smoking. In 2014, an ADA task force created the Comprehensive Foot Exam and Risk Assessment, which takes less than three minutes to complete. This was developed so that the exam could be used by a wide range of healthcare providers. It takes substantially less time to complete than a comprehensive exam and eliminates common barriers to frequent assessment.
The exam consists of three components. Taking a patient history, ask questions such as previous leg or foot ulcers, prior angioplasty, stent or leg bypass surgery, smoking, slow healing wounds, diabetic, and if so, what are current control methods? Any signs and symptoms of neuropathy, leg pain at rest, loss of sensation in extremities, and do they see a podiatrist regularly? Performing a physical exam. Look for discolored, ingrown, or elongated nails or a fungal infection. Are there corns or calluses or bony deformities? Open wounds. Conduct a monofilament exam. Perform a musculoskeletal exam. Perform a vascular exam. Look for hair growth. Check for pulses and temperature differences. Providing patient education. When explaining to patients how to care for their feet daily, a foot care bag is essential in promoting self-care management. It is important they examine feet daily by inspecting them. If they cannot bend over, suggest the use of a mirror put on the floor and place foot over it rotating until every angle is viewed. Look for redness, sores, swelling, or cuts. When applying lotion or powder, make sure not to apply between toes because it becomes moist and causes sores to occur. After bathing, instruct them to use a pumice stone to remove the dead skin from the feet to avoid cracking on the heels. Only use the pumice stone in one direction so that you are not rubbing the skin. Then while nails are soft, cut them using a straight edge nail clipper, not one that is curved. If necessary, have them file straight across, not in a sawing motion. Encourage them to wear, if possible, white cotton socks to absorb moisture and to notice any drainage from sores that have occurred. Select properly fitting shoes, especially if there is a foot deformity. Lastly, stress that they should not go barefoot so that they will prevent any injury to feet. One quality measure which can be submitted towards your 2017 MIPS scoring related to diabetes is the foot exam. This measure can be found within two specialty measure sets, internal medicine and general practice family medicine. It's classified as a process measure and its data submission method is electronic health records. The measure definition is as follows. The percentage of patients 18 to 75 years of age with diabetes type 1 and type 2 who receive a foot exam, visual inspection and sensory exam with monofilament and pulse examination during the year. So in conclusion, it is important to remember that healthcare providers should empower patients to take an active role in their own healthcare. This material adapted by Quality Insights, the Medicare Quality Innovation Network Quality Improvement Organization for Delaware, Louisiana, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, under contract with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, an agency of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It was originally developed by the Home Health Quality Improvement National Campaign. The contents presented do not necessarily reflect CMS policy. Publication number QIB2050217.